All right, guys, I just got through watching all the E3 videos that were available on the GameSpot. I think it was GameSpot trailer. Either way, I'll leave a link to the channel and I'll also leave a link or like a timestamp in the bottom for like what part of the video I'm talking about for that specific platform or whatever they were called, a uh, panel that I was watching. So you can just go to it if you're interested in it or whatnot. Also, don't take this to heart because like, some of these franchises I haven't played. Some of them I've just seen other people play. And some of these I actually asked some of my friends about because they know more about it than I do. So these are just kind of initial impressions on games that like you might not even see the game footage in. So it's just what I think about it. So don't let me hurt your feelings. If you're that interested in it, check it out. If it's a game franchise you love, let me know about it. Maybe it's something I might be interested in too that I just don't understand yet. And thank you, Classic Steve, for the idea to review this. So let me get to my notes because this was a lot of videos that I watched. So I kind of took notes while I was doing it. I was drinking a lot of alcohol and I just like, it was so like the videos were so long. I like sobered up by the end of it and I was like, all right, now let's do the video. <laughs> I wish I was still drunk to be honest because reading a script's kind of hard for me. So the Outer Worlds game, which was like the kickoff for the Microsoft panel. Also, I'll have a grade at the end of it for how I thought the panel did. It reminds me a lot of Mass Effect because it's like a space game where you have decisions and the decisions affect the world. It's not as serious looking as Mass Effect. My buddy was telling me it was made by the same people that made Fallout New Vegas. And he was telling me how like it had a lot of similar things I was explaining with the Mass Effect, how you had decisions that changed the world and have impacts on it. So if you're interested in games like that where your decisions matter and you like space and you like shooting things, that's the game for you, probably. Also, some of these reviews are going to be short because I only have so much to work with off the thing. Also, you seem to have like a companion thing. So the thing that will make this game good to me is what Mass Effect did. It made it where like I cared about the characters, I cared about the world, and that's what made the Mass Effect game good to me. I, the shooting was cool and it played really smoothly, but the main thing that matters is I cared about my crew and like their stories, that kind of thing. Bleeding Edge looks everybody said it already i saw it in the comments on the youtube thing it looks like overwatch but it's like most of the characters seem melee which might be pretty interesting because i'm not a shooter so the fact it's melee i might have a chance even though in overwatch you do have melee characters like reinhardt but in this game it seems like melee is like the predominant way to attack i only saw like maybe two players that shot a gun and there's obviously the pudge character that throws out the hook and pulls somebody punches from doubt uh, if you ever played that and he's the hook god he was like the predecessor of all that hook and stuff roadhog was not the predecessor blitzcrank was not the predecessor it was pudge my boy pudge he had his own game of warcraft 3 frozen throne it's called pudge wars and he he was originated in dota he's based off an abomination but Pudge Wars, man, you could yank each other. It was freaking awesome. You're jerking each other off the, like across the stage. That sounded wrong, but it was intended. Okay. Ori and the Will of Wisp. This game looks so beautiful, and I'm going to get it. I need to play the first one. I'm going to get the first one soon, so you will probably see an Ori playthrough on my channel soon because I'm going to play that game because I keep seeing it. I'm like, that looks so beautiful, and it looks like a great platformer, and I never buy it, but I'm going to buy it soon. Okay, Minecraft Dungeons. This is a Diablo for my nephew. My nephew loves Minecraft. He watched that Netflix Minecraft bullcrap so many times that so I hate, I hate Minecraft. But it's like Diablo. If you like Diablo, if you like Minecraft, this is Minecraft Diablo in my opinion. Looks just like it. And it looks like it's multiplayer, which my Diablo 3 was. I think all the Diablos are multiplayer. But it's Minecraft and Diablo. <laughs> okay. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. So this i think this is this could be a totally wrong opinion but if you like star wars and you like to see how the universe unfolds it adds to it i guess you can see more of the star wars universe my problems with this game is i didn't see any mechanics from the gameplay i saw and this was featured in a couple of the panels i didn't see any like gameplay that looked too new or different no mechanics that look super neat i mean there's you could play with your drove but i whatever like you could crawl through ducks or whatever you could do that in bone art that bone puzzle or that bone art game i played with freaking arthur you could take your head off and roll it through a freaking vent okay cool but uh it like you grabbed a missile you launched it back it really reminded me of like a worse version of that Star Wars Apprentice, you know, where you have the Apprentice of Darth Vader and you can either be a good guy or a bad guy, except you don't really have the good guy or bad guy choice. It seems like you only have the good guy choice. And the mechanics didn't seem too revolutionary. It didn't seem anything that was like 
I hadn't already seen in a Star Wars game. I could be wrong. It's probably still early in development. I don't know. I'm just going off what I got in the trailer. Blair Witch game looks interesting. I love horror games. When I first saw it, I was like, oh, are they making a sequel to that Resident Evil VR game? I played that game. Scared the crap out of me. It was the first VR game I ever played. Oh, my God. This chick came down from the like roof with a chainsaw. Scared the crap out of me. I about died. And it looks so realistic, too, but it wasn't. It's Blair Witch. So, Blair Witch... My thing with this game is it looks scary and it looks like it's going to have scares, but something I like in horror games, and this is like indie games, like there's a lot of horror games that are made by indie publishers that are freaking awesome because they have a great story. They have a unique story. They have something that's really strange. Like I have an idea what's going on. I know somebody's trying to kill me, but I don't know why. Or even I don't know anything about them. Like the Outlast games, Amnesia, I learned a lot more about the world. And this, it really just looks like, you're going to rescue a kid and monsters start fucking with you, screwing with you. Sorry, language. Oop. <laughs> I'm not bleeping that out. That's just too much editing for me. But that's what the game looked like to me. So I don't know. If it has like a good story, I'll be interested. But really, it just looks like it's going to jump scare you a couple times. But who knows? I never really liked the Blair Witch movie, so I don't think I'd like the game. Even though it does look nice. Cyberpunk 2077, boy. <laughs> that was visually beautiful. And then it was like, bam, Keanu Reeves. I saw him in the game. I was like, oh, shit, that's Keanu Reeves. And then he actually came out of the stage. And I was like, oh, crap, they actually got Keanu Reeves. That's the real one. So on the cheap date, I was like, all right, you got me, Microsoft. That's awesome. <laughs> I like Keanu Reeves. That's pretty dope. So... That game I'm excited for. I really hope it comes out for PC. My buddy's telling me it was coming out for the PC, so I will probably get that game. My computer probably can't run it because it looks so beautiful. Maybe on the lowest setting. I'm going to give that one a try if it comes out. Spirit Fair. This looks like my kind of game. This is a 2D like adventure exploration game that looks like it's super story heavy. One thing that I'm worried about is I didn't see any dialogue boxes, so I don't know if you can actually talk to the characters. There's one of those stories that kind of unfold in front of you, which I've seen really good ones, but I still like the dialogue. So it makes it where I can get more attached to the characters, but I've seen games without dialogue that's just as meaningful and impactful. Looks beautiful. I'm super excited for that game. New Battletoads. I am burnt out on Battletoads. I played it too much as a kid. I will not buy a new Battletoads. And my friend was bringing it up. Y'all missed the meme when Pawn Stars was talking about everybody's flaming Pawn Stars with Battletoad. That was the time to release this game. It's too late. No, so, but if you like side scroller beat em ups that are like 3D now and you have like certain mini games that I think already exist in Battletoads, you can play them brand new and it will be brand new to you if you're younger than i am probably <laughs> rpg time the legend of right it looks like a the art style is pretty neat it looks drawn but it doesn't look like uh, i'm going off the trailer it looks like everything's kind of like pre-done it doesn't look like you have many options on how you play the game could be completely wrong it could be like a doodle whatever that game was doodle scribble knots or whatever it was could be like that i don't think it is though i think you have to do certain things and it kind of plays out before you. It just has a really neat art style. It looks like a good kid's game. Not for me, though. Xbox Game Pass All Day One Games. What do I have right here? Oh, <laughs> Xbox Game Pass. So it says all day that the game... Oh, my God. I can't read what I said. I was so drunk. Oh, I'm, they had like a montage of games that flowed really well together. And the music played well. There was a lot of games that I probably wouldn't have played. Some of them look all right. But it's probably games I wouldn't play. But it, they had a nice little collage for it. Jesus, I was <laughs> junk me. What are you doing? Flight Simulator. Oh, I would never play this game. It looks so lame and boring, but I have friends that would love it. So if you're in that thing where you just want to pretend you're a pilot, but you're not a pilot and you just want to see beautiful things, Flight Simulator. I would just watch a video of somebody flying around, but that's just me. You might want to be a little bit more hands-on and fly the plane yourself, kind of, but not really. Flight Simulator's for you. All right. Age of Empires, remade for all the old heads that like old RTS games. It's new, it looks better, and this is for people that maybe just got into RTSs that want to play old RTS. I actually had no, um, one of my girlfriend's parents, ex-girlfriend's parents, not like I have multiple girlfriends. One of my ex's parents were <laughs> just loved Age of Empires and she'd play all the old ones. So that's a game for her. I don't know if that really fits a huge player base, but if it does, that's for you. Next game, Wastelands 3. This was false advertising because they kept bringing up Colorado and Colorado Springs because I lived there for like four, four to three years. Nothing like that game. <laughs> uh, and it did... 
my buddy was telling me it was kind of like XCOM, which there was another game like this with the Mafia later on, but it didn't look like a game I would enjoy. It's like a top-down, I guess from what he was explaining to me, like a real-time strategy kind of game. If you like XCOM, I'm sure you'll like it. It looks like it has some good humor. Just doesn't look like it's for me. Matt Booty. <laughs> I don't know who he is, but I really like his name. And he brought out the Double Fine Studio guys, whose sense of humor when he was doing his presentation was pretty good. And he was also the guy that made the Psychonauts game. Apparently, Double Fine Studio did that in some other games. And I know Psychonauts was really big when it released for the GameCube, so I'm I'm really glad they're doing a second one. The mechanics actually look pretty innovative, and it looks like it would be a fun game, so... If it comes to PC, I'll buy it. I'm not going to buy a console or a console over it. All right. So there's a more expansive Lego Star Wars game. I remember when G4 TV was on, uh, used to be on the air, they'd always have Lego Star Wars on it. So people obviously liked it. Now there's one that covers all the episodes. You don't like the new episodes? They got the old episodes. Want to see the new episodes? They got the new episodes. <laughs> all that. It's so great. All right. Dragon Ball Game Project Z looks so lame to me. I'm a huge anime fan, but I've already seen Dragon Ball Z, and it looks like one of those games where the play style would be super easy, and you just watch the cinematics, and I've already seen Dragon Ball Z, so I have no interest in playing that game at all. 12 minutes. Man. <laughs> Inappropriate joke incoming. This is your warning. I've already said some cuss words, so you should be ready for it. <laughs> this chick put out a box and she was like, Guess what it is? And I thought the dude was going to be like, Oh, I don't know. She said, Like the Lonely Island song, Dick in a Box was going to start playing. <laughs> it's my dick in a box. <laughs> that would have been great. But it wasn't that. It's a Groundhog Day game where the guy's been experiencing this and he already knows what's going to happen. So it's kind of cliche. I've seen Groundhog Day, the movie, and there's a bunch of animes that cover this that I love. Like, Erased. God, that's one of the best animes. Steins Gate. And I love seeing how the characters are going to try to figure out how to break the loop or what's causing the loop. So I'm I'm excited for that. If it comes out on PC, I'll definitely get it. Way to the Woods. Man, this game trailer, as soon as it started, triggered my Bambi PSD. Because I saw the two deers. There's an older deer with her child. And I was like, Bambi. <laughs> <laughs> this is Bambi. That child, that deer is going to get shot. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. <laughs> it looks like another game that's like visually beautiful and it's kind of like exploration with event triggering. And I'm, it's, I'm assuming this is another game that might not have dialogue, but it tells the story really well. So I'm excited for that as well. I love games like that. New. Oh, wait. I'm not that far yet. New Gears of War game. So, not a game from, I played the first one, I really enjoyed it, but then I played the second one, it was like the same thing, and I played the third one, it was like the same thing, I didn't play the ones after that. And the dude was hyped, and he's like, oh, new innovative gameplay, that's never been done before. And they did not show gameplay throughout the whole thing. <laughs> they showed a lot of cutscenes, and they showed game modes, they showed newer game modes, but nothing that would, I would say was innovative or something I hadn't seen before. There's like plant the bomb and some shit and stuff like that. Survival horde mode. They've already had that. But the trailer looked super. Uh, the trailer was actually pretty lit. All the trailers for that are pretty lit. They had uh, Mad World by whatever the freak his name is. Gary something. In one of their trailers way back in the day. That was awesome. And this one had uh, that rap song that's got that crazy train sample in it. And it's got little John screaming, if you want it, you can get it. Let me know. That shit is lit. I love it. And I just, oh, God. I'm glad I drank because that's embarrassing. Okay. New controller. There is a new controller. This is the only panel that had the new controller in it. <laughs> if you think a controller is going to make you play better in a game without some kind of like macro or something, you're wasting your money. It's not the controller, it's the player. Unless you got one of those dick friends that gives you the broken controller when you play Mario Party or something, just so you're screwed. Because <laughs> they have like a broke controller and the good one and they give you the worst one. That's when the controller matters. But you don't need no controller with better triggers. <laughs> like You don't need that if you're good enough at the game. Daylight 2. If you like or dying light too if you like dying light one you'll like dying light two you parkour and you kill zombies there you go there's a new one apparently there's a lego forza game it actually looked kind of cool or expansion it was expansion for forza 4 it looked kind of cool i like the legos they were dope it looked pretty neat like I, the main thing i liked is that you run through the building but i'm not big into racing games anymore racing games that i really like were gran turismo need for speed hot pursuit 
And those were games where I could just do like side stuff that was fun. Like in Gran Turismo 3, I was trying to get my license forever because there's these challenges and they were super freaking hard. But, uh, and then there's, uh, in Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, I just ran from the cops all day. Like, I, I don't know. When you're just racing each other, it's not that much. Unless, I'd rather play Mario Kart, to be honest with you. I'm not a big Forza fan. That's just me. I know some people like that. It's not for me. Uh... Also, they made a car out of Legos. They made like a legit car out of Legos. I felt so bad for them because I'm like, you guys made this car for like 30 seconds of a trailer for a game. <laughs> that looks so painful. And I was a noob at Legos even when I was a kid. I just sucked at Legos. Like, I was never good at it. All right. Here's a War Mobile game. The trailer looked f adorable. Like, it looked so cute. I just, <laughs> I would say watch the trailer don't play the game i hate mobile phone games because they always just seem like a time waste and a cash thing i could be wrong they might be good for i actually ha i played some good phone games there's one uh, but they're all like choose your own adventure text-based games because i just love reading the story that's the only good phone games i've played that aren't just like a cash game or time sink that don't lead anywhere you don't feel enriched or empowered by playing it you don't feel like you get to any end game or anything like that from my experience that's just my experience you might like you might like the fact that there's something that you can always do and always have access to it not for me because there's a lot of fun games on here so that's why i'm expanding upon this now state of decay 2 heartland i didn't know there was a state of decay 1 or 2 but there's a heartland expansion now and it looked really cool the story looked dope you have two people no, you have four people and two, uh, there's two stories for each two people <laughs> in the total collective four. I don't know how to say it, I'm struggling. But uh, they have like their own stories and they're trying to survive the zombies. And it seems like the stories are gonna get intertangled and it looks pretty dope. I never played State of whatever it was in the first place. So I lost the State of Decay. So it looked good. Maybe I'll check out State of Decay. Maybe I won't, I don't know. And oh hell no, man! When I saw Fantasy Star Online two, that triggered me so bad because back in the day, and like I was in college, one of my buddies told me to download it, and we had to do all this crazy stuff to get it to play because it's a Japan only game. I had to like go to Wikipedia and like copy and paste characters to get in through the captcha. Oh my god! And then the game sucked. Like, granted, I couldn't tell what I was reading, but I got to play some of the gameplay where I was, like, going through the stages. It was hella repetitive, and it just was not fun to me. And it came out in 2012, and they're releasing it next year like it's a brand new game. Oh, my God. I'm sure it got better since 2012, but I would... From my limited experience with playing it with it in the Japanese version, I would not get it. I would not get it. It was a terrible experience <laughs> for me, anyways. Crossfire X, not enough info. Looks like a Call of Duty campaign kind of game. Looks good, I guess. Like, like back when they made the good Call of Duty campaigns, like Modern Warfare One and Modern Warfare Two. Tales of Reese. Looks like it plays like Final Fantasy Thirteen with like the real time battle kind of RT, uh, turn based strategy. I don't know how it can be real time and turn based, but Final Fantasy Thirteen style. And it looks like the graphics look like the older Final Fantasy, not old, older, but like semi older, like Final Fantasy IX, maybe. Doesn't look like uh, the new Final Fantasy games where they're like more mature looking characters. They're more like chibi like. So, new Borderlands game. If you like the Borderlands games, you will like this one, I am sure. The cast actually looks pretty dope. The cast always looks pretty dope, but this one looks pretty extra dope. So, if you like the Borderlands games, you'll like this one. I'm sure. Elden Ring. So, when I looked at it, the only thing I really got from it was big swords. <laughs> big swords, there's knights. But then I found out the guy that made the game was the guy that made the Souls game, so it's going to be too hard for me to play it. <laughs> but the people that like the challenge, they're coming out with a new one. All right. And then the they started hyping up the console and they're talking about how they're getting rid of the load screens and I was like please Microsoft don't take away my load screens my brain gets too overwhelmed when I'm playing games as it is I need the load screens to give me a break to like process all the things that happen but I'm just kidding about that but really though they hyped it and they're really talking about like the specs and everything and I'm like their Xbox game console has better specs I think than my computer so why don't they just release a computer? Like, is that the way of the future? Is somebody going to make like a 
comp a computer and then like make it efficient for their games and whatnot and then just release that because that just seems where it should head so that's why i feel about new consoles i'm just like you guys are just getting closer and closer to computers just make a computer <laughs> god dang that i could buy for cheap just make a gaming computer i can buy for cheap new halo game it okay so i like the trailer this did something that i think the gears of war franchise didn't do in their trailer is it brought the story looked very interesting like it could have been its own story before you found out master chief was in it and it was a halo game it looked pretty interesting like i was waiting when he was watching the hologram with his daughter i was waiting for her to say i love you 3000 <laughs> but it never happened uh but uh it actually looked like it has a really good story so that brings people like me into the game because I don't really like the play style of Halo. I've never been a big Halo fan, but just for the like, the fact that they added this like more interesting looking story to someone like me that's not a big sci-fi person, even though it's still sci-fi. Obviously, there's still in space and whatnot, but it didn't look like oh, we're just we're here to kill the aliens. It didn't look like that. It just looked like he got stranded in space and this dude picked him up and you're trying to get home. That's what it looked like. And I was like, that story looks pretty dope. That was actually pretty good. I can't complain. I give Microsoft an A-. Now, I'm going to tell you from the get-go, that was the highest grade I have given so far. I know we have game, uh, panels coming out tomorrow or the 14, or today, actually. But I'll do those in a separate part. I just already have so much to do after watching all the stuff that's already released. So, yeah, we'll do those in another part. EA Play for the E3 was the worst one I saw. We're going from the best to the worst. They had three hours, and they covered... What games did they cover? Battlefield, the new Star Wars game, which I already saw. Madden, FIFA, Sims. And I think they covered one of the Battle Royales I don't play. And for three hours... Microsoft went over 60 games in total. Yeah, I'm guessing that included the montage. But these people did six games in three hours. Microsoft did theirs an hour and a half. It was action-packed. It had all this cool stuff in it. And these guys are literally going talking about Battlefield for like an hour, talking about what inspired them to make the game. I don't care what inspired you to make the game. I just want to see the game. That's it. Just show me the game. If I like the game enough, then I'll look up what inspired you. God, this is a trailer for the things you're releasing. It really just looked like they weren't releasing much. This was the worst one by far. It gets a D minus. Bethesda. <laughs> okay. I like how Pete Hines was sitting in the crowd before he went on stage with their intro message, which was like, oh, we're just gamers like you, because that kind of made him seem like he was everybody else because he just came from the audience and just went on stage he could have been a random guy for all we knew but he wasn't he was pete hines and then they for real talked about fallout 76 which was a terrible game that <laughs> takes balls to start with the game that flopped you even admit it flopped and then you're still trying to sell it but before they even tried to sell it more they talked about elder scrolls blades <sighs> and i think it's a mobile game I don't know. It looked like one of those old games where you're like first person and the character kind of already walks, but then you do your actions. That's what it looked like to me. It looked really bad. I, It looked terrible to me. Maybe it's good. It looked awful to me. Notes from my buddy, because I was talking to him about Fallout 76, because I didn't play it. I've heard from everybody else, and he played it. So he said the, the thing that they were hyping is that the community is good. That was what they were saying about Fallout 76. That was the good thing about it is that the community was great. When people get a Fallout game, you're not playing it for the community. You're playing it for the expansive world. And Fallout 76 was incredibly empty when it came out. The gameplay is alright. It plays like a Fallout game, but it's empty. You want The thing that made Fallout great was that it was an immersive single-player experience. And you can make it an immersive multiplayer experience. Just put stuff in it. Make it where there's things to do with your friends. That's what it should be. It shouldn't be that barren. They're releasing a Battle Royale expansion, which looks all right, I guess. If you want Fallout Battle Royale, there you go. <laughs> I don't, I'm not a big fan of Battle Royale. Ghostwire Tokyo, they had this cute Japanese lady that didn't speak English. Like, I could barely understand what she was saying, but she was hyping the game pretty well. It was, like, pretty dope. 
And then all these people start getting raptured. And I was like, oh, crap, what's going on? Jap <laughs> Japanese rapture looks scary because these people are getting beamed up by something. And it looks like you're playing Robin Hood. It doesn't really tell you too much. I just saw that they were getting raptured and stuff. And then they had their little trailers. And it was like, when I'm not playing Bethesda games, I'm a nurse. When I'm not playing Bethesda games, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, well, when I'm not playing Bethesda games, I'm playing actual games. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> That's what I thought about when I was watching. <laughs> I'm playing games that aren't Bethesda. I'm playing a good game. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Elder Scrolls Online. I played it. Not for me. It's an MMO. If you like MMOs in the Elder Scrolls universe. Not for me. Another mobile game with Nickelodeon cartoon graphics. Commander Keen. If you like Nickelodeon graphics, if you like phone games, check out Commander Keen. Elder Scrolls Legends, because I hear you like freaking mobile games. It's Elder Scrolls, but it's on the phone. Rage 2 expansion. Looked pretty good. It looked like <laughs> the trailer seemed like they swiped too many cooks when they were doing like the 90s soap opera opening song and then all the crazy stuff's happening. It really seemed like they just copied that. But it's still funny, and I still liked it, and it looked pretty good. So, they're getting an expansion for that. Wolfenstein, if you like killing mo Nazis, you get to kill more Nazis. And there's a VR version now. And also, there's Youngblood, which is not VR. They're releasing two of them. One of them's co-op, which is the Youngblood one. And you get more weapons and more weapon upgrades. Again, not my kind of game. But if you like it, there it is. All right. What is next? The game is called Orion, I think. So... I think that's what it's called. I capitalized Orion, so I'm guessing that's it. And I thought the game looked pretty sick because it looks like someone wants to repeat the world over and over again with the Groundhog Day kind of thing. And somebody wants to stop the world from repeating. And it's like in a dystopian future. And oh, the game's called Deathloop? Is it Deathloop or Orion? I don't know. I'll leave a timestamp. You can figure it out for yourself if you're really interested in it. It's actually the better, like, Bethesda games I saw. It actually looked pretty dope. So. Oh, no, wait. It's called Deathloop. Okay, my bad. I figured it out. Orion is a software service that they have that's supposed to make games play better and make them more efficient, which always seems like a trap to me. I get these things, and then they never work. I've tried a few of them. Don't like it. New Doom. My friends are really hyped for this game. I had never was really into Doom in the first place, but there is a New Doom, and there is a, like, a multiplayer kind of thing now where you can actually play. There can be two demons versus a slayer, which is kind of cool. It actually looked pretty dope to get to play as the demons and whatnot. So, there you go. Ubisoft. Oh, wait, Bethesda got C-. minus. It was like below average. Ubisoft. Started off with all the Assassin's Creed games playing in the background, and there was an orchestra, and it was playing the music throughout it. But apparently, they're going on tour. I wouldn't watch it, because I'm not that big of an Assassin's Creed fan, and I, I like game music as much as the next guy. I'll open up an OST and listen to it. But unless it's like... Ocarina of Time and Super Mario 64 together or even separate. I'm not going to watch them in concert. I'm sorry I probably won't even watch those two unless they're combined because it's kind of a short OST Watch Dog Legion looked freaking amazing So I saw Watch Dogs. I guess it was the second one. I didn't know there was a second one, but my friend told me there was a second one and I saw the trailer and it looked really cool, too, but then people said it wasn't good when it released so but this one looks freaking great. The story looks great, and you get to watch this old lady do some crazy stuff, and it's playing Hall of the Mountain King, which is my favorite classical piece of all time. If you never heard it, look it up. You have heard it, I promise you, most likely. You just don't know what it's called. It's called Hall of the Mountain King. It's great. <laughs> that was <laughs> That was probably one of the more innovating games I've seen in the whole E3 panels that I've watched so far. Adventure Time is going to Brawlhalla, which Brawlhalla is a very Super Smash Brothers type game that I I had fun with it for like an hour, and I wish I probably wouldn't have bought it. I think I bought it. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have bought it if I could do it again, because it was fun for an hour, but that was about it. Ghost Recon Breakpoint. They brought out an adorable pit bull. Oh my goodness, I, the pit bulls are like the most, best dogs ever. So They're so cute, and it made me squee. I love pit bulls, and that dog was so cute. Uh, what was the game? It was Ghost Recon Breakpoint, and it looks like a military game. <laughs> but the pit bull is awesome. And a new mobile game, Tom Clancy's Elite Squad, where they miss all the Tom Clancy games. You even got Sam Fisher from the sneaky ones. And now they have a mobile game. Ooh. 
and then Just Dance 2020. I've heard really good things about the, or Just Dance, yeah. I've heard good things about the Just Dance game. I hear it reads really well, and I hear like, it's a lot of fun, so they're making a new one. And they had a dancing panda come out. They had like a whole crew of dancing people, and there was a dancing panda with like a pink mohawk. I was like, hi, man, you do you. That's awesome. For Honor, Shadows of the Hitokiri. I saw this and I was really excited for it until I found out it was For Honor because For Honor is a very disappointing rock, paper, scissors game, to, in my opinion. <sighs> Rainbow Six Quarantine. PVE co op. Looks pretty cool the way they were explaining it. They didn't have any gameplay, but basically you're three friends and you can play through this area where there's like this parasitic thing trying to kill you and you and your three friends have to shoot your way out. It looks pretty dope. Doesn't look like a Rainbow Six game, but it looks sick. Division 2. Bad experiences with Division 1. So I would not buy Division 2. <laughs> Apparently they're releasing it in episodes though, so I don't know if it's going to be DLC or if it's going to all come out. You buy the game and you get all the episodes. If they're doing it as DLC, that's a scam and I wouldn't buy it just because they're disrespectful. Outplay Plus. A subscription for Ubisoft games. I would think about it because I really want to play that Watch Dogs Legion if that's the only way for me to get it. Roller Champions. It looks like a pretty dope competitive rollerball game. You know what? What's that thing called? Roller skating? Not roller skating. Where the people go around in a circle and they pick up the ball and then they rollerblading around battle derby ball or whatever. I can't remember what it's called, but that's what the game is. And it's looks like it'll be a fun competitive sports game. If people like Rocket League, you're probably like this. Somebody will learn how to get good and competitive at it, and people will love it. I'm sure. This gets a B. No, oh, not just that game. The whole uh, Ubisoft gets a B. Square Enix. Oh my god. All the game trailers in this were almost all Final Fantasy, or not Final Fantasy, RTSs. Almost all of them were RTSs. Not, oh, okay, let's go through this. It opened with the remaster of Final Fantasy VII to me, which the graphics look phenomenal. Final Fantasy VII wasn't my favorite Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy, but I know that's a lot of people's final, favorite Final Fantasy. So, if you liked it, they're making it with phenomenal graphics, and it really looks like it's going to play like Final Fantasy XIII to me with like the quick action kind of thing. But, yeah, it looks pretty good. I, I'm not going to get it because seven isn't my favorite. But if they start remaking some of the other ones, yeah, I'll go. Ahead, I'll have to try it. Life is Strange 2. Oh my god, I love Life is Strange 1 and what was the thing? Life is Strange 1 and before the, Life is Strange Before the Storm. Because it has wonderfully immersive storytelling. Your decisions master matter. Master. Your decisions matter. The storytelling is masterful. And it looks like that's going to be the same case for this one. There's also one that they released a while back. Captain Something. I need to play that. Because I think that's been out for a while. And it just looks amazing. It looks like the story is going to be great, and I want to see it. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronics. Chronics. Chronicles got remade. Is getting remade. Octopath Traveler. Looks like a pretty dope 2D RPG. That I, if, I might get it. It looks pretty good to me. That's probably one of the better ones I've seen. It's apparently going to be on Steam eventually, and then there's the last Remnant Remastered, which is another RPG getting remastered. Dragon Quest Builders 2, which is Minecraft with Dragon Quest graphics. I don't like building things. If you like building things, if you like Minecraft, you can do Minecraft with Dragon Quest graphics now. Cool. Time, And then they did a timeline of stuff that already came out in Square Enix, which I don't know why they did that, because really that just means to me that you don't have things for the future because you're supposed to be hyping me for the future, not for the past. I know the past. I don't. I need the future. <laughs> That's why I'm watching this. All right, and now they're coming out with the top-down arcade game, arcade racing game. And to me, that's one of those ideas that could be left in the past. I don't think it's a game that needs to be remade with better graphics or anything like that, more smooth gameplay. Because that's kind of like making a game without saves. It continues like Muppy the Bunny. I'm looking at you. You know save, continue, have an ass game. <laughs> God damn, that's just not a good idea. I don't like it. Okay, that's just my opinion, though. Battalion 1944 looks exactly like Call of Duty 2 with perks from like newer things you can unlock things you can do stuff you can climb the leaderboards call of duty 2 with newer it looks like to me okay square enix music is now available to streaming services but if you like square enix music that much you would already have it i promise you <laughs> you would figure out some way to get it it's not that hard kingdom hearts 3 is getting dlc 
Final Fantasy XIV is getting DLC, which is exciting for a lot of people because I know that's one of the MMOs that people are really getting into now. Like, that's, I think, taking up the mantle after WoW's been dead for a hot minute. Uh, dead to, in my definition. I know people still play it, and I know they're trying to redo vanilla. But Final Fantasy XIV is a lot, an MMO that a lot of people play, and it's getting an expansion that apparently has as much content as if they released a whole new game. So that's really dope. I don't even know what I'm doing with my hands. I bet I've thrown up all kinds of dumb stuff because I'm like sober drunk. I like I was drunk and now I'm sober and now I'm doing stuff like this. <laughs> okay. Um, more in depth, Dying Light 2 trailer apparently. So there you go. A lot of older RPGs are going to be released in America. I'm guessing they're talking about games that weren't originally released in America. So that's kind of cool. But at the same time, it's a little bit late. Final Fantasy Braves X Vs, which is a phone game, is getting an expansion. Apparently, a lot of people play it. I do not. I would never play it. Outriders looks like a three-player shooter co-op in a fantasy world that has like edgy Gears of War characters in it. It looks interesting. They didn't tell you enough to really get into it. Oni Naki is a chibi action RPG game. It looks pretty interesting. I guess it looked alright. Final Fantasy VIII is getting a remake. Not like the seven is, but it's getting a remake. So that's kind of cool. Eight's not my favorite either. Eight was I just the combat just felt too bland to me in eight. Compared to the other ones, Smallville's Adventures looks like it's alright for a movie game, but most movie games are like generally good to avoid. Nintendo Direct wait, C minus. That's what uh Square Enix got. Square C minus. A little bit below average. I think that's what okay. Now we're going to go over Nintendo Direct, which I was actually super disappointed in. They're giving you the Hero DLC for Smash Brothers, which I guess is a Dragon Quest character. I don't... It had a lot of other Dragon Quest characters in this moveset, so I'm guessing that's what he is. And did you know that the America Nintendo Direct guy is Doug Bowser, which means the final boss is in America, if you were curious. Luigi's Mansion 3. I didn't play, I didn't know there was a second one. I didn't play the first one. I actually saw a lot of my friends play it growing up and it looked really fun and it looks like it has a lot of mechanics. This is one of the games that actually showed the mechanics in the trailer. So I'm sure they're almost done with finishing it. Hopefully it looks pretty sick. And then Dark Crystal Tactics. I like tactics games. I like Dark Crystal. I don't think those two necessarily go together. I'm a huge Jim Henson fan, and I'm excited for the new Netflix, even though they're probably going to ruin it because Jim Henson's not alive, and they probably won't use puppets. It'll be like the thing without the puppets. Like when they release a new thing, you know, the original was done puppets with John Carpenter and all that, and the new one didn't have it, and it sucked. It was like all CGI monster that wasn't scary. That's probably what's going to happen with Dark Crystal, but I don't see that being a tactics game. I don't even see it being a fighting game. It's like an adventure game, like a story game. I don't remember the little elfling people. I can't remember what they're called. Fighting people. I think they were mostly running, sneaking, and hiding, not fighting. So I don't know how they could fight and do a tactics game, but we'll see. Honestly, I hadn't seen the movie since I was a kid anyway. It was kind of scary. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening looks pretty cool. It looks like one of those mobile Legend of Zelda games, but it's got like circular Link in it. The graphics look pretty good. I'd play it if I had a DS. Or 3DS, if that's what's coming out through. I think it's coming out for the Switch. I have a Switch. I might get that. Maybe. Depends what how expensive it is. Collection of Mana. Looks sick. I know this is an old RPG series, so they're making... I think there's a new one, which is called Legend of Mana. And they're releasing a whole collection of Mana, so that might be interesting. Witcher 3 is now available for the Switch, which I didn't even like. I know that's a sin because it was game of the year and everybody loves it but i just felt like there was too much stuff to do and i didn't want to do it <laughs> god dang i got overwhelmed fire emblem three the three houses kind of threw me off because i didn't see the traditional character that looks like marth <laughs> god dang. but it looks good if you like tactical rpgs fire emblem is always super solid they're releasing all the resident evils for the switch all of them I guess, except for the VR and some probably of some of the new ones. I think they're going all the way to six. So there you go. A new No More Heroes, which I hear was one of the best games for the Wii. I had the Wii, but I did not have that game. I had great titles like the Bleach game that was on the Wii. That was not very good. But yeah, I heard it was super fun. I might get it because I have a Switch now. So yeah. Contra Rogue Corps. 
Oh, so there's a new Contra, and it has a panda. It looks pretty interesting. It looks like a nice addition to the series. It's like a 3D top-down now shooter. And there's multiple different play styles with the different characters. And there's online multiplayer, which is really cool. <laughs> Demon Machinima, which is a mecha game. This game, it, mecha games, in my opinion, really depend on how much you can customize your mech. That is the most important thing to me in a mech game. Ex unless it's like... Uh, Gundam Battle Saw 2. Then the only thing that matters is that you get to play Big Zam. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That was a game from Shepard. But I did love that game. That was a really good fighting game. I used to play that so much when I was like 11, 12 maybe. Forever ago. Years far, far away. Panzer Dragon reminds me of the Peter Attack game in uh, Neopets if you ever played that, but it's 3D. Where you're kind of on rails and you're shooting things on your dragon. I wouldn't buy that, but you might. Pokemon Shield, Sword and Shield, they had some kind of promotion like you can have this Pokeball and you can put your favorite Pokemon in and you can take it to the real world. I don't know. That looks stupid to me. <laughs> I haven't played Pokemon in so long. I think the last one I played was like Sapphire Ruby, probably. <coughs> Excuse me. Astral Train looks like an anime game where you capture chimeras. The things that are chimeras are like things that you can capture and you can use their abilities. This game is going to be very stringent, in my opinion, on if... How you can trans how you can traverse the story with your chimeras. If you have to do it one singular way, it's gonna be a crappy game. If you can do it in multiple different ways, it'll be probably pretty fun to see if you have like a choice in how you play it. Empire Sin, this was the mafia game where it's like XCOM and you have a squad and you kinda have to do things because that's how mafia works. If you play if you've seen how Facebook that mafia game. <laughs> so yeah, it's like XCOM. There's that new Marvel Ultimate Alliance. If you played the Ultimate Alliance games, there's a new one coming out. Crypt of the Necrodancer is coming to the Switch with Link, which is interesting. I kind of want to play that game. That's a game I've seen on Steam multiple times, but I never bought. Like, what was the other game? Don't remember. The game that I already forgot about that was a really pretty 2D platformer. But I will get that one eventually, I'm sure. All right. Mario Sonic Olympics. So, I could have swore I saw a trailer for this so long ago, but apparently... It's either a sequel that they're not saying is a sequel or it's just coming out now. But you never know when you've been smoking the devil's lettuce. So you could just <laughs> be making stuff up back then when I was in college. I don't know. That's when I thought I saw it. And then they did a montage of games that are available for the Switch on the Nintendo store. They have Nino Kuni, which looks like a Mizaki game. And Silk Song are probably the only two that I really took an interest in. And then Banjo-Kazooie is coming to Smash. But where is my Banjo-Kazooie game, Nintendo? That's what I want. I want a Banjo-Kazooie game. The Banjo map looks phenomenal. If they would have spent as much time as they did putting him in that game, they could have made a dang Banjo-Kazooie game. That's what I want. I don't want a Banjo-Kazooie racing. I don't want nuts and bolts. I want Banjo-Kazooie 3. There's Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, and Banjo-3. Give me 3. That's what I want. <laughs> oh. What was the last thing? Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 is in development, which I heard was a really good Legend of Zelda game because it's very Dark Souls-like. It was kind of challenging. So it's getting a second one. I need to play the first one still, but I I got too many games to play. I give Nintendo a C plus. It was a little above, above average, but overall it just uh, disappointed me. I really wanted to see a Banjo-Kazooie game, but that wasn't the make or break. There was just a lot of things that I think... They just didn't, weren't releasing many things, it doesn't seem, that are super interesting. Breath of the Wild 2 is, but that's just in development, it didn't really even tell you, didn't show no gameplay, didn't tell you when it was coming out. Oh, Animal Crossing, there's an Animal Crossing game, and the only thing I got out of it is when they run into the beach, all children in the corn like, and it was kind of creepy, that was about all I got out of that Animal Crossing thing, so there's a new Animal Crossing. <coughs> Alright guys, thanks for watching, as always, if you could, please like and subscribe, I will be doing part 2 on this when all the things come out tomorrow i will put down in the bottom the timestamps for the games i talked about and the link to the channel that has all the videos so yeah bye